Namaskar, good evening viewers. It's 9 p.m. You are watching the news on Sunset TV. I am Rajiv Kumar Singh. In the next half an hour, we will get you national and international news of the day. Let's begin with today's headlines. Uttarakhand gets a gift of development ahead of Diwali. Prime Minister Modi launches connectivity projects worth more than 34 billion rupees in the state. Offers prayers at Kedarnath and Badrinath temples. Current incidents of crime are borderless. Home Minister Amit Shah says in his address at 90th Interpol General Assembly urges global police and intelligence agencies to work together. Army chopper crashes in Arunachal Siang. Four killed. Search underway for one more person. Cause of the accident not clear yet. Pakistan Election Commission disqualifies former Prime Minister Imran Khan from holding public office, also cancels his parliament membership. Supporters take to the streets in protest. Odisha, West Bengal brace for Cyclone Sitrang. Evacuation of people from coastal areas begins. Both states likely to witness heavy to very heavy rainfall on Monday. A quick look now at our flash news segment. Six depot service to be organized by Yogi government in Ayodhya on Sunday. PM Modi to participate for the first time. First conference on Akash Tatwa, Akash for Life to be held from November 5th to 7th in Dehradun, informs Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Blending of traditional and modern knowledge to be showcased. DGCA lifts 50% ceiling restrictions on SpiceJet airline to operate with full capacity from October 30th. Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut's bail plea matter to be taken up on November 2nd. Raut's judicial custody extended until the same date. Special Court in Mumbai rejects bail application of former Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh in the alleged corruption case being probed by CBI. UGC invites comments and suggestions from stakeholders on the draft national credit framework up to 30th of November. Department of Defense organizes cleanliness drives in 4,569 sites across the country. Special Swachita campaign 2.0's main objective is to achieve behavioral change in people in offices and fields. CBSC to conduct 16th CTET 2022 between December 2022 to January 2023 in online mode. A date of exams is to be mentioned on the admit cards. ISRO preparing to send Chandrayaan-3 in June next year. Chandrayaan-3 much better and stronger than the previous two versions, says ISRO chief. Diwali celebrations begin in the US from the iconic Times Square in New York. Vice President Kamala Harris invites eminent people to VP residence for celebrations. On to our top story. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid foundation stones of two ropeway projects, one connecting Gauri Kund and Kedarnath and the other from Govindaghat to Hemkund Sahib. He launched development projects worth Rs 3,400 crore, including the two ropeways in Mana village in Uttarakhand. Prime Minister Modi said the two pillars for developed India of the 21st century are pride in our heritage and making all possible efforts for development for all. He stated that these infrastructure projects and ropeways will not just provide connectivity but will also boost economic development of the region. I also have done the work of the 
दो रॉप वे प्रोजेक्ट के शिलान्यास का सौभाग्य मिला है इससे केदारनाथ जी और गुरुद्वारा हेमकुंड साहब के दर्शन करना और आसान हो जाएगा गुरु ग्रंथ साहब की हम पर कृपा बनी रहे सभी पूज्य गुरुओं पे हम पर कृपा बनी रहे कि ऐसा पवित्र कार्य करने का गुरु बस गुरुओं के आशीर्वाद से हमें अवसर मिला है बाबा केदार के आशीर्वाद बने रहे Prime Minister Modi also offered prayers at Badrinath Dham in Uttarakhand. He was accompanied by State Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami. Prime Minister Narendra Modi offered prayers at Kedarnath Temple in Uttarakhand's Rudraprayag district amid heavy security. Beginning his two-day Uttarakhand visit, Prime Minister Modi arrived at Kedarnath Dham and performed Rudra Bhishek at the Inner Sanctum. He also offered prayers before the Nandi statue. The Kedarnath Temple was decked up in quintals of flowers for the occasion. The Prime Minister was addressed in white-colored traditional attire of the hill people with a swastik symbol embroidered on it. After the prayers, the Prime Minister Modi laid foundation stone of 9.7 km long Gauri Kund Kedarnath ropeway. With this ropeway, the devotees will be able to reach the temple from Gauri Kund in just 30 minutes instead of several hours long journey on foot. The Prime Minister also visited the Adi Guru Shankaracharya Samadhi Sthal and reviewed the work in progress along with Mandakini Ashtapath and Saraswati Ashtapath. He also interacted with the workers at the site. Prime Minister Modi also greeted the devotees gathered at the temple. Moving on, terrorism is the biggest violator of human rights. Union Home Minister Amir Shah said while addressing the 90th Interpol General Assembly being held in New Delhi on its concluding day. He urged Interpol and its member countries to join hands for cross-border cooperation to defeat cross-border terrorism. He said that criminal syndicates are working in a nexus and hence global police and intelligence agencies should work together. Shah also said India is preparing a national database on terrorism and narcotics so that police agencies can use information effectively. टेररिज्म की चुनौती से निपटने के लिए दुनिया की सभी काउंटर टेरर एजेंसियों का एक साथ आना मुश्किल लगता है इस दिशा में मेरा इंटरपोल से सुझाव है कि सभी सदस्य देशों की काउंटर टेररिज्म एजेंसियों के बीच रियल टाइम इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सचेंज लाइन स्थापित करने के बारे में एक स्थायी तंत्र का विचार करना चाहिए और ये तंत्र आने वाले दिनों में टेररिज्म के खिलाफ हमारी लड़ाई को और पुख्ता करेगा ऐसा मेरा विश्वास है फोर पर्सन है आर्मी हेलीकॉप्टर क्रैश इन अपर सियांग डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश दिस मॉर्निंग Five people who were on board heard the helicopter at the time of the accident. Search is on to find one person missing. According to the Defence Ministry, the advanced light helicopter, also known as HAL Rudra, took off from Likabali and crashed at Migging near Tuting. Tuting is about 35 kilometers from the border with China. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar released the Jal Jeevan Sarvekshan Toolkit 2023 in Delhi today. He expressed the hope that the mission would rapidly achieve the target of tap water connection in every household. He stated that quality, quantity and continuity are the core principle for success of the Jal Jeevan mission. He also termed access to safe drinking water and sanitation as critical to inclusive growth. Uh, the purpose of the Sarvekshan is to monitor the progress of Jal Jeevan mission and assess the performance of the states. The awards will be given on monthly, quarterly and annual basis at the state and district level based on their performance. 
therefore very grateful to those who have devised this mechanism because no program can succeed unless there is accountability mechanism the surest way to fail and the surest way to be non transparent is that we do not engage into assessment and scrutiny but if the scrutiny is in the public domain the scrutiny is known to one and all it carries very high degree of credibility Odisha is expected to receive heavy rains early next week due to a possible cyclone in the Bay of Bengal. The cyclone is expected to move beyond the state and towards West Bengal. The West Bengal government has begun the process of evacuating people from low-lying areas of several districts. According to the IMD, the weather system is expected to become a low-pressure area on Saturday and a deep depression on Sunday before intensifying into a severe cyclonic storm on Monday. It is very likely to move north, northeastwards towards West Bengal and Bangladesh. The National Crisis Management Committee today reviewed preparedness of central and state governments to deal with the cyclonic storm over the Bay of Bengal. Time now to take a quick look at some more stories from across the nation. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar called on President Draupadi Murmu at Rashtrapati Bhavan today. He wished the President a happy Diwali. India successfully tested Agni Prime ballistic missile from the test range of Odisha coast. Agni Prime is a new generation advanced variant of the Agni class of missiles with range capability between 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers with this third consecutive successful flight test of the Agni Prime missile. The accuracy and reliability of the system has been established. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, and the Indian Air Force have concluded a deal worth Rs 6,800 crore for 70 Hindustan Turbo Trainer 40 trainer jets. According to HAL, the twin-seater HTT-40s are used for basic flying training, aerobatics, instrument flying, navigation, night flying, and close formation. Its maximum takeoff weight is 2,800 kgs, while its top speed is 450 km per hour, with a range of 1,000 km. Indian Navy today detained a suspicious boat in the Park Strait. The boat was sighted near the Indo-Sri Lanka International Maritime Boundary. The Navy opened fire to stop the boat, due to which a member of the crew aboard the boat was injured. The Supreme Court today agreed to hear a fresh plea moved by a women's organization challenging the remission of sentence and the release of convicts in the 2002 Bilkisbano gang rape case. A bench of Justices Ajay Rastogi and C.T. Ravi Kumar tagged the matter with the main petition and said it would be heard along with it. The court was hearing a plea filed by the National Federation of Indian Women. And time for a short break in the bulletin. Lots more coming up on the other side. Do stay tuned. The only show of its kind that tries to demystify diplomacy and make complex international issues understandable to everyone. I am Vikas Swaroop and every week I bring you a new dispatch from the front lines of foreign affairs. We talk to the best experts who enlarge our understanding of foreign affairs and show us why the world matters to India and why India matters to the world. So keep watching Diplomatic Dispatch only on Sunset Television. संसद सदस्य सामान्य जनहित के मामलों पर प्रस्ताव संकल्प सदन में चर्चा करने के लिए संसद में लाते रहते हैं 
लेकिन कभी ऐसा भी हो जाता है कि चर्चा के लिए लाए गए प्रस्ताव को सदन के अध्यक्ष स्वीकार तो कर लेते हैं लेकिन उस पर चर्चा के लिए कोई तारीख तय नहीं की जाती है तो ऐसे प्रस्ताव को भी नो डे गेट मोशन के रूप में जाना जाता है इस प्रस्ताव को राज्य के साथ साथ लोक में भी पेश किया जा सकता है Welcome back. Time now for all the updates from the Russia-Ukraine war front. European Union leaders focus on strengthening their support for Ukraine. This after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warned that Russia was trying to spark a refugee exodus by destroying his country's energy infrastructure. In a draft of an EU summit statement, the leaders affirm that they will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes with continued political, military and economic support. Ukraine and Israeli officials held talks about Kiev's request for Israel to provide air defense assistance. The request comes just days after Russia allegedly deployed Iranian kamikaze drones to carry out strikes on the war-torn nation. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba said he had spoken on the phone to Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid and discussed in detail the provision of air and missile defense systems and technology. Lapid's office said that the Israeli Prime Minister had expressed a deep concern over the military ties between Russia and arch foe Iran. Four civilians were killed in an attack on a key bridge in the Kherson region. Russian appointed deputy head of the regional administration said today, blaming Ukraine for the attack, Kirill Stremesov also said uh, 10 vehicles were damaged in Thursday's strike. 13 people were wounded in the bridge attack. Stremesov said the strike showed the necessity of the ongoing mass evacuation of Kherson residents. The Antonivsky Bridge, which crosses the Dnieper River, provides Russia with a supply link to its forces in Kherson city. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said Putin appears to be more open to negotiations on ending the war in Ukraine than in the past. He also expressed hope over the possibility of negotiations, responding to Erdogan's comments Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that Putin has been open for negotiations from the very beginning and nothing has changed in that respect. He added that it is the Ukrainian law that prohibits any negotiations now. And now news from some other parts of the globe. The European Union leaders struggle to find solutions to deal with the energy crisis triggered by Russia's war in Ukraine. After day-long talks in Brussels dragged well into early Friday, the leaders agreed to continue working on ways to impose a natural gas price cap as a consensus on issue could not be reached. After lengthy talks in Brussels on Thursday, the 27 EU leaders could not agree on imposing a gas price cap to counter Russia's strategy to choke off gas supplies at will. EU's biggest economy, Germany, resisted the call, arguing a cap risk freezing Europe out of the gas market. At least 15 EU states, including France and Belgium, wanted a cap on gas prices. French President Emmanuel Macron said he worked hard with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in bilateral exchanges to get a breakthrough on the issue. EU Council President and meeting host Charles Michael said that there is a strong and unanimously shared determination to act together as Europeans to achieve three goals, lowering prices, ensuring security of supply and continuing to work to reduce demand. With winters around the corner, the members agreed to keep working to find a compromise on a list of measures proposed earlier this week by the European Commission. 
To protect the already struggling EU economies, the European Commission has proposed a system to pool buying of gas. The Commission is also pushing for a new LNG gas index, better reflecting the market following the drastic reduction of imports from Russia. At the opening of the summit, the need for rock-solid EU unity in confronting Russia was highlighted by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in his video address. The bloc's energy ministers will meet next week to further discuss the benchmarks set out by leaders. The member states have already agreed to cut demand for gas by 15% over the winter. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Now in the global wrap. Italy's Giorgia Meloni told President Sergio Mattarella that she was ready to become Prime Minister. She asserted that she could swiftly form a new government despite tumult within her right-wing coalition. Head of the Nationalist Brothers of Italy party, Meloni met the President alongside her main allies, Matteo Silvini, who leads the far-right league, the Silvio Berlusconi. A founder of the conservative Forza Italia party. Ahead of his visit to Australia, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said that he wants to bolster military and energy cooperation amid their shared concerns about China. Kishida said he hoped to update their 2007 bilateral security pact to further promote their partnership. Kishida said he hoped to discuss the future of Japanese resources and energy stability with his Australian counterpart Anthony Albanese. He added that Australia is Japan's special strategic partner. Pakistan's Election Commission has disqualified former Prime Minister Imran Khan from holding public office. This after its tribunal found him guilty of unlawfully selling state gifts given by foreign dignitaries and heads of state worth over 140 million Pakistani rupees. Khan has denied the charges. The ruling coalition that took over from Khan after his ouster in a confidence vote earlier this year had filed the case before the election commission. Visuals released by NATO on Thursday shows Fighter jets from Italy, Poland and the US are flying in the skies over NATO's eastern flank. The lineup of aircraft included Italian Eurofighters, Polish F-16s and Polish MiG-29s and United States F-22s. The planned one-day series of aerial maneuvers were conducted from Lask Air Base in Poland on October 12th. Uh, this was a part of NATO's air shielding mission an increased air and missile defense posture implemented in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Beijing said that cooperation between China and the Pacific Islands was mutually beneficial and conducive to regional peace and stability. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said that the cooperation was sincerely welcomed by the people. The Comments came after Australia had announced it would set aside 29 million US dollars to fund police deployments in Solomon Islands in next week's budget. China's increasing presence in the Pacific, including entering a security pact with Solomon Islands in April, has raised concerns for United States and ally Australia. And time now for all the latest from the world of sports. Paul Sterling slams an unbeaten 66 as Ireland makes a Super 12s of T20 World Cup and send two-time champions West Indies crashing out in a stunning upset. Lakshasin got the better of his senior compatriot H.S. Pronoy in straight games to progress to the men's singles quarterfinals of the Denmark Open. Sain bet. Pronoi 21-9, 21-18 to set up a last eight clash with Japan's Kodai Naraoka. The Indian team has handed a 1-3 defeat by Malaysia at the World Junior Mixed Team Badminton Championships in Santander, Spain. Anupama Upadhyay was the sole Indian to win her fixture. Steven Gerrard was sacked as Aston Villa manager Less than two hours after his struggling side crashed to a dismal 3-0 
defeat against Fulham. Robert Lewandowski struck twice as hurting Barcelona flexed their muscles to thrash Villarreal 3-0 and stay three points behind La Liga leaders Real Madrid. That's a wrap on the bulletin. Stay tuned on Sunset TV for all the latest updates around the clock. Do share with us your feedback on our social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Good night.